And, and, and you're right. I mean, I see that DC is fuming. DC is the talk of a ton of shit. John Jones and DC are going back and forth on Twitter, which, of course, I is always that. a lot of fun because, the, yeah, yeah, go on. Just, just, just read that out. Yeah, uh, Daniel Cormier t- uh, tweets, he tested positive again, exclamation point. Uh, then USADA equals joke, Jeff Nowitzki equals joke, Andy Foster equals joke. A pinch of Turin ball in an Olympic-sized pool from 2017 that stays in your system for 18 months equals joke. Then he wrote, NSAC, you're cool. <laughs> Which is funny because they, yeah. Nevada won't Nevada let him play. Nevada Athletic Commission. So then no, John no, but that jo- wasn't the back and forth. No, no, no this yeah, is where yeah, it gets crazy. Yeah. So then John Jones responds, <clears throat> I could slap your wife on the ass, which, by the way, taking a page out of Anderson Silva's book, that's, or I'm sorry, Chael Sonnen's book, rather. I was going to uh, say Chael Sonnen, get it right. And you could literally do nothing about it. You're my bitch, DC, that will never change. Funny how you're giving me two posts, but said nothing when I asked you to come and get your belt back. Uh, DC responds, John Jones, you couldn't do shit, you steroid abusing junkie. I swear I would never touch your wife's flat ass, lol. <laughs> Jesus. And I didn't respond. I'm not helping you sell your bum ass fight, you drug abusing steroid cheat. Fuck you. Um, I gotta say, in that back and forth, DC won. DC oh yeah. won. I mean, yeah, oh he yeah. did He did go after the wife, you know, but if she has got a flat ass, then he's merely stating facts. He could have stayed above it. it. He could have stayed above it. Um, the, the he got, no, uh, I, I John got Jones, into the wife's ass comment. John Jones took it too far by saying that, and he could have been he, he. No matter what, he would have won the exchange by saying what he said because it's truth. I'm gonna fucking help you sell a fight. Fuck you, dude. I'm the champ. You're yeah. you're caught cheating. Suck my dick. Um, but if he would have not mentioned his wife, he would have just been righteous there altogether instead of sort of like coming down to that level. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But hold on a minute. The, 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 these two are um, sworn enemies. You know, these two hate each other. They are each other's nemesis, nemesis, whatever you want to call it, which however you say that. But they hate each other. You know, so oh, the gloves are off at this point. And it's like, and, he, and Joe's mentioned uh, his wife first, and so DC played back. So whatever. Uh, you can understand DC, DC being so pissed off because DC is the champion. He is. Listen, regardless of whatever happened, the facts of the matter right now is that Daniel Cormier is the champion, but he's still living under the shadow of getting knocked out and beaten up DC. Tw- uh, sorry, John Jones twice. So it is. It's a very very difficult position. DC's never tested positive. We say where there's no snow, uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. You know, he's testing positive all over the place. You can't blame DC for being absolutely fuming that here's a guy that's tested positive multiple times, you know, shamed the sport multiple times, and now the UFC are moving an event. But I understand why the UFC are doing it. You know, they've got to pay the bills. They've got to earn money. They are a business. It just sucks for all the innocent people that flew to Vegas. That, that's what it really sucks for. Everyone else sitting at home watching on pay-per-view, this actually just makes a more interesting build-up. It really yeah. does. It gets more press for the fight. you know. And, and sitting at home and watching it on pay-per-view, your experience will be no different. But what about those fucking people that have flown to Vegas and they're going to be sitting there and come Saturday night you know, they're having to watch it at a, at a sports bar. You know, I mean, you, you got to feel for those people. You really yeah. do. Didn't, uh, who gave uh, DC Fighter of the Year? Some fighters only? Who, somebody just gave DC ESPN, Fighter of the Year. Yeah, ESPN. Sam, I mean, I've had the accolade before. I got it in 2016. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I, I know about those things. Oh, okay, just making sure. <laughs> Is that a related to yourself? <laughs> but I guess I, John... I just, I just gotta, I was just going to get that comment in there, you know. Uh, yeah, I, as a fellow ESPN fighter of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was Daniel Cormier, Lewis. Yeah, go ahead. Um, but uh, didn't, I mean, I guess John had expressed um, his disagreement. I don't know what it was. But, uh, you know, DC, undoubtedly fighter of the year. Unda- undoubtedly. I, I don't even look at the loss to John Jones or l- the losses to John Jones as – um, as legitimate, I I think John Jones is Who, cheap. Hold hold on. So this year DC fought. Was it this year he fought Uzdemir for the light for the vacant light heavyweight belt? I know he fought Stipe check. and he fought um, Derek. Not Derek Brunson. The Black Beast. What's what's the Black Beast called? Lewis. Derek, Derek Lewis. Derek Lewis. Pardon me. Pardon me. Yeah, my mind went blank there. And it might have been Uzdemir at the start of the year as well. And if that's the case, here it is. Yeah. 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 Dude. Uzdemir, Stipe moves up to heavyweight fights, Stipe. And then Derek Lewis um, knocks at Derek Lewis. The, The fact that he moved up and won the heavyweight title 
was the the legitimate light heavyweight champion. Yes, he lost to John Jones, but John Jones fucking cheated, dude. What do you want me to say? It's just you get caught cheating. I know that it's easy to go, cool, we have the optics of John Jones, you know, kicking him in the head and then finishing the fight. But it's just it's not real. What do you want me to say here? It's like Lance Armstrong, when he got caught cheating in the well, Tour de France, well, which well, is riding well, a fucking well, bike. Listen, the, yeah, yeah, but I hear what you're saying, and I agree, because I'm the biggest anti-steroid advocate out there. I really am. But um, it happened, and you just got to accept it and fucking deal with it. I got fucking head kicked on Vito Belfort and went down. Is everybody running around saying, oh, that fight never happened? It yes. It did fucking happen. Yes. Well, well, yeah, but that's the reality, though. It, it went down. I lost a fucking eye because of it. Yeah. But, but it, it happened. You can't rewrite fucking history. It's bullshit, and I'm on DC's side. But he did fucking beat him, you know, fair and square. No, fuck no. He was on steroids, and he was punished for it. That's um, something that's been I just said multiple times about your career specifically is the amount of times, you know, you have very few losses to people that – weren't you know either using trt uh whether it's exemptions or not or, or you know people that were abusing steroids that's something that i think you know when people fans of yours when they talk about your career um you never really mention it it's not, to be honest with you, you don't um you know i know you talk about a lot of steroid abusers and this is something you've been against but it's not really something that you break down but if you go through the, the, your losses there's only been a couple that were to people that didn't get in trouble for using steroids and that's something yeah. that you should be proud of. What do you want me to fucking say, dude? You fought clean your whole career. You know, in other sports, baseball, it went to the fucking Supreme Court. Yeah. Lance Armstrong was front page news for two months because he was riding a fucking bike with steroids. Shut up. MMA fighters are kicking and punching each other to the point where they can cause legitimate, long-lasting, dangerous effects, and it should be taken yeah, well, way more seriously than any other sport. And for some reason, we're blinking an eye. The fact that John Jones might have something in his system, in my opinion, is enough to pull him from the fight. Can I he might. say something? Can yeah, I? Can I? Can I have a? Can I have the floor for a moment? Is that Please. okay, Lewis? Sorry. I know you're all excited for Christmas, but you fucking keep <laughs> interrupting me and don't let me fucking get a word in. Edge ways, you American fox. Edge ways. It's not edge wise. Nothing's edge wise. Nothing's edge wise. It's edge ways. Because if it was on an edge, it's not as fucking big, and you could squeeze it in edge ways. Not edge wise. Okay. Um, let's keep it on track. Fuck. Lance Armstrong and the fucking cycling. We got a big title fight this weekend. It's John Jones versus Alexander Gustafsson. John Jones has just tested positive. I don't want to hear a fucking word about Al fucking, what's his name? Lance Armstrong. Yeah, I don't want to hear about that. I want to talk about John Jones and Alexander Gustafsson and how this is even more pressure now for John Jones um, because now he has to go out there and win this fight. And I already thought that A, Gustafsson won the first fight. And I think Gustafson's going to win this fight. I really do. I just think that all this, I mean, if Jones can go out there and beat Gustafson in style, then yeah, you know, he probably is the greatest of all time because I, I do believe what I'm hearing from the scientists. They, if they say he's left over, these are smart people that aren't on the John Jones uh, payroll. They're not on the UFC's payroll. The California Athletic Commission is a, a very highly respected athletic commission. If they're saying, listen, all the science stacks up uh, that this is left over from whenever it was, May to uh, June 2017, then fair enough. I accept that. Yeah, you're right what you said, Lewis. They shouldn't be... Um, he shouldn't be allowed to fight yet, but if, if, if that's what they're saying and that's the rules and they're saying that he's done time served, then fair enough. Okay, all right, so the fight is going to go ahead. I think Gustafsson wins this fight. I really do. The, 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 the word on the street for the first fight between Jones and Gustafsson was that Jones didn't train. Okay, they said that Jones didn't train for that fight. He was out partying all the time and he was, you know, he, he wasn't dedicated and all the rest of it. And that's why Gustafsson did well. That's bullshit. I find that to be bullshit because I obviously I'm working the desk this weekend for UFC. So I've been watching the fight to prepare for that. And I watched that first fight again, Jones versus Gustafsson. First of all, I thought Gustafsson won the first three rounds, so he should have won the fight. And the fact that Gustafsson won the first three rounds and not the, not the last three rounds says that I had nothing to do with cardio or anything like that. It, so that lends me to believe it had nothing to do with Jones not preparing for the fight. If it was because Jones hadn't prepared for the fight, he'd have won the first three rounds <clears throat> or the first two rounds and lost the last three because he was tired. 
you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I saw John Jones win in the fight. I went back and watched it. It was super close. Um, you know, when you, especially when you're not a fighter, people argue like they fucking know. People are like, no, dude, John Jones won that fight. No, dude, let me tell you something. It was so fucking close that, was it a split decision? I'm not sure, actually, it but it, it, either way, it was close. It was a close fight, and, and you know, I, I remember at the time thinking that Gustafsson had won it, but I wasn't outraged. I, there, you know, there was no talk of robbery. It was a close unanimous. fight, and whichever way you want, unanimous, yeah, mm. uh, and whichever way you slice it, it was a close fight. It was a great fight, and they're doing it again. I just think that Gustafsson, um, I mean, the, the, the people talk about John Jones having a layoff and coming back. It's actually been longer since Gustafson was in there. His last mm. fight was against uh, Teixeira, which I think was May last year. May and obviously Jones, Yeah, and Jones fought in June or July against DC uh, yeah. at the Forum, I think. At the Forum again. So Yeah, it was about the same amount of time laid off, and it's not that's not enough time. Um, I don't think that's... It, it is a long time, but it's not a crazy amount of time. We've seen... I think John Jones, his last mm. layoff was longer than that, and he came back and he looked, I think, a apprehensive against well, OSP, but he still won the fight. Well, Gustafson, Gustafson only fights about once a year. If you look at his record, the last few times, I mean, the, la the, the I think it was 2014 before he had two fights inside one year. A, I don't like that. I prefer fighters to be more active, but... My point is, I don't think that layoff's going to affect him because he fought once in 17, once in 16, and once in 15. So that's typically what his schedule's been. Right. Um, and John and Gustafson, I haven't heard any kind of official word yet, but he seems to be taking it all in his stride. At the end of the day, you got to jump on a 45-minute flight and fly to LA. Yeah, it sucks for the fans, but from the fighters' perspective, you have to pay tax anyway. So fuck it, you're going to pay some state tax. Not Unlucky, you know. It is what it is. It's um, LA, and, uh, us... LA, LA and Vegas are a few hours from each other. It's not the end of the world. You don't have to like upend your entire fucking. You're not going across the country. You don't have to fly all these people out. You're getting in a car. It's probably inconvenient at best for uh, the fighters. Um, yeah, look, dude, I hope Gus wins. I really do. I hope this all becomes sort of a non-issue and a non-point. Um, and, and Gustafson comes out and wins in uh, exciting fashion. I, he tweeted at John Jones something to the effect of, look, you could be on whatever rocket fuel you want. I'm still going to knock you the fuck out early. Yeah. So good. Good, Gustafson. I like that. I like that as well from like a fighter where we're like, yeah, dude, take all the steroids you want, motherfucker. I'm going to knock you out. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. I got to just talk about um, my Performer Sleep mattress, which I love. Um, this is both mattresses in my apartment, both my son and mine are Performer Sleep mattresses. Um, it's an amazing, amazing mattress that shows up right at your door in a box. You don't have to go to a uh, you know department store and, and you don't have to worry about a crazy huge mattress, you know, having to be going upstairs and into different rooms. These come folded up, rolled it up, rolled up in a box. They use really cool technology to be able to do that. And they have this other technology called copper cool technology, which is a combination of gel particles and microscopic copper particles that are infused throughout the foam that create cooler nights, give added support and give you all of the great healthy benefits of copper. Yes, absolutely. But also, the mattress gives you that bounce that you want in a mattress with its uniquely designed Enazorb technology. Enazorb allows you to sleep on top of your mattress rather than sinking down into the mattress, which in result creates optimal support and heat dissipation. But perform a sleep, go one extra. They offer free shipping straight from the manufacturer to the front door to cut out the older, the middlemen, the retail markups, and it makes it a completely hassle-free experience. And also, they offer a 100-night in-home risk-free trial. Yes, wow. you get to buy this. They send it to your house, free shipping, Super convenient, amazing mattress. Then you get to try it for 100 days. Over three months, this allows you to test the mattress in your own environment. See if you like it without any, uh, you know, pushy salesman, anything like that, you know, forcing you to make a decision. This way you get to sleep in it, you check it out, see if you like it. And if you like it, keep it. If not, send the fucker back. Now, here's what you got to do. If you want a new mattress, which I do advise you get one of these, me and Lewis have them both and they are great, go to performasleep.com. That's perform, P-E-R-F-O-R-M, asleep, A-S-L-E-E-P.com, performasleep.com, and use the promo code BELIEVE. It will give you $150 off any size mattress. Wow. I don't know what more you want. If you want a new bed, you want 100 days, you want free shipping, you want $150 fucking dollars off, go Boom. to performasleep.com, do this. All right, 